Today I'm interviewing Jillian Dempsey and she works for Harry Gray here at Caltech and uh, what she is trying to do is to build a better catalyst for turning sunlight into hydrogen. Well at least using the energy from the sun to make hydrogen out of water. And a catalyst is a chemical that is used in a reaction but doesn't get used up. So it can be used again and again and again and it doesn't go away. So she is trying to build a better catalyst so we can have uh, better ways of harnessing the sun energy, sun's energy and making hydrogen. Hi, uh, my name is Jillian Dempsey and I'm a fourth year grad student um, working with Harry Gray on the Powering the Planet project. So what we're interested in doing is first taking the catalysts that we already know make hydrogen and learning a little bit about them to see how exactly they make hydrogen. And once we can figure out how they do make hydrogen, we'll be able to design better catalysts, improve upon the catalysts we already have, and make more hydrogen, and make hydrogen faster. So the first catalyst that we've shown can make hydrogen pretty well is this catalyst right here. It's got a cobalt metal ion in the center surrounded by all of these uh, atoms in what we call a ligand framework. And so the question is, how does this little molecule right here do that? So what we want to figure out is, does this me uh, metal center take an electron, and then take a proton, and then take another electron, and then take another proton, and spit out hydrogen? Or maybe another possibility is this molecule right here takes one electron and one proton, holds on to them, and it swims around in solution until it finds another catalyst that has also taken one electron and one proton. The two of them meet up, each of them shares their electron and their proton, and they make H2. So you normally study these catalysts by electrochemistry. And basically, we plug an electrode into the wall, stick that electron into a solution that has our catalyst in it, and watch that catalyst take electrons, basically, from the wall socket. Well, that works pretty well to tell us whether or not it makes hydrogen, but it's making hydrogen thousands and thousands of times per second, and we can't watch that that fast. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take our catalyst, put it in a little cuvette, also add a molecule called a photosensitizer, and we're going to go downstairs to the laser lab. So when we get down to the laser lab and we want to start studying our catalyst, what we do is we take a little uh, quartz cuvette, put a solution of our catalyst in there, and we also add something called a photosensitizer. Now, when we put this cuvette in front of the laser, and the laser, one laser pulse, hits our cuvette, that laser pulse is going to excite the photosensitizer. And once the photosensitizer is excited, it wants to inject one electron into our catalyst. And once the catalyst has an electron, it can make one molecule of hydrogen. So now once we've triggered the electron to jump into our catalyst, we've also triggered our sensor to turn on. So now our sensor is watching all the colors change in our solution. When our catalyst gets another electron, it changes from yellow to blue. And when it starts making hydrogen, it's still changing colors. So what we do is we watch our catalyst change colors, and by watching it change colors, we can see how it's making hydrogen. So with all these studies we've done on these catalysts, we think that we've learned something about how they make hydrogen. What we think happens is it requires two of the catalysts to each take one electron and one proton, swim together in solution, meet up, and spit out H2, or hydrogen. We want to improve that mechanism. So instead of having those two catalysts swim together in solution before they can meet up and spit out H2, we think we'll just tie them together. What we're doing is we're trying to modify the ligand so that we can kind of put a tail on it that attaches to another ligand. Once the two ligands are tied together, the two catalysts are now tied together, and they don't need to diffuse together in solution to meet up. They're always right next to each other. And hopefully, this is going to show us that we can improve the rate of making hydrogen. Once we figure out how to make a really good catalyst, we're going to be able to take this catalyst and put it in that solar cell. And when it's in that solar cell, we'll have a way to take the light from the sun and store it in the bonds of hydrogen and make a fuel from the sun.
I think the reason I wanted to be a scientist was because I always wanted to know why. I wanted to understand things. And when you do science, you can go into the lab and you can answer your question. Find out whether the answer is yes or the answer is no. Find out how it works. If you have the tools and training of being a scientist and you have a question, you can probably go answer it. I think being a scientist is a really cool way to always be involved in trying to make our world better. So every day when you go into work, what you're doing could change how the way people live 10 years from now. And you always can look up whether or not your reaction worked or failed and realize, I learned something. And when, I figure out, when I'm done figuring this out and I'm done solving this problem, it might change what happens 10 years down the road.